you guys welcome back to the channel daughter of increase my name is thanks and for those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video and i post new videos every tuesday thursday and saturday all about my faith god christ and expanding the kingdom of god so as the title says below another reading vlog and this is another anticipated highly anticipated 2020 release that i was able to get an arc copy of which i cannot wait to physically read when i get a physical copy but today is a monday december 16th it's currently 12 44 p.m my morning was not the best i overslept past all four of my alarms my son overslept as well so we're both home i'm in a living room back in this corner um just because i like the way the christmas lights look hung up all around um i have my light on right now but if i turn it off i have like this christmasy vibe but i have the light on for now so i can make this intro um but i'm gonna be reading are you guys ready for it cry the raven by morgan l Bussy. the third and final book in the ravenwood saga and i am not ready i'm not ready because that sequel left me wanting to cry it left me hurt I have loved this series from the beginning. Um, the first book, which is <gasps> Mark of the Raven, I gave five stars. Um, loved it so much. And the sequel, Flight of the Raven, I also gave five stars. I love both of these. They're amazing. They are action-packed fantasies, um, but the perspective on God is so different, and I love it so much. I'm a fantasy lover in general. Secular books that I read are always fantasy novels. I love magic. I love paranormal beings but the way that morgan l Bussey takes fantasy and collides it with the bible is so epic i love it so much this is really what got me into christian fantasy like right here most people say ted decker i didn't read ted decker until I, after i read her books um and morgan l Bussey just will always have a special place in my heart i love these do you see the tabs on that one and then on this one they're amazing so i finally have an e arc of the third and final book and i need answers because things took place at the end of the sequel which gutted me so much i'm not going to talk about what these books are about but i will talk about the first book so the first book follows lady celine she is the daughter of um or excuse me that's the daughter she's the heir of the ravenwood house and basically each house has some type of power and her family powers is that they are dreamwalkers but dreamwalkers were thought to have been extinct because something took place with her family line back in the day that was really like harsh so a lot of people thought that her sort of line or her lineage was um extinct however her mother has now taken on this power of dreamwalking as a sort of um they use it they use it for evil in a sense and they worship this thing called the dark lady the dark lady in my mind is the devil pretty much um but they use their powers for evil they use it to either kill or to blackmail people and her mother is raising um celine to become the next powerful uh grand lady in their line however even though celine is the most powerful she does not know if she wants to use it for bad, she's very much in a position of trying to figure out if she's supposed to use it for good, if she's supposed to use it for evil. And the dark lady is trying to get to her. However, we have the light, and the light is God. Um, but the light is reaching out towards Celine, trying to reel her in and pull her in. And what happens is her mother, her mother is Ragna, Lady Ragna, I think that's her name. She's evil. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't like her mother. Her mother's evil. I love her father. Yeah, but Lady Wagner, um, Grand Lady Wagner rather, um, is her mother. And Caiaphas is her father. I adore her father so much. Oh my god, her father is amazing. Her sister Amara is... Mm, her little baby sister Ophelia I love. But um, Lady Wagner is an evil twisted old woman. I don't like her. She's just... I don't like her, but I also feel bad for her. Especially at the end of the sequel. Um, I felt really bad for her and how she had to live her life. It kind of sucks. But she kind of takes that out on her daughters, which I don't like. But she basically told um, Lady Celine, her daughter, to basically kill Grand Lord Damien. And Damien is a part of the House of Waters. Yeah, he's a part of the House of Waters, um, House of Maris. And his entire family line died. His mother died, his brother died, and um, his father died. <laughs> so he is not the only one a part of his house. And in her trying to kill him, she begins to learn different things and begins to experience the light. 
and begins to fall in love and i love it and it's so cute now i'm gonna say this is not a ya read it's more new adult because they are in like 18 19 20 something years old um grand lord damien is in his 20s and grand lady celine is in her eight she's about 18 19 i can't really remember but um i'll leave my written review for both the first book and the sequel down below as well as my written review for the third book because by the time this video goes up my review will be done um but <sighs> i'm ready i need answers because what happened to amara <sighs> and that sequel it gutted me um <laughs> And I just, I love, 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 I love, I love the relationship between Grand Lady Celine and Grand Lord Damien. They have such a beautiful and healthy relationship in the way that they build and mesh with everything. So we just gonna stop rambling. I highly recommend it. It's bomb. We're going to start reading. I'm going to come with, to you guys with my thoughts. But I will be reading it on my phone through the Kindle app because um, I did get an arc off NetGalley. So I'm hoping to be a part of the launch team <laughs> for the book. Um, or I hope that the publishing company actually reaches out to me about the third book because like, I, I, I'm obsessed with this series so much. Um, definitely, definitely love it. And I'm, I'm predicting that this will be a five star. I'm predicting that it's going to wrap up the way I need it to. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be wonderful. And there are definitely going to be more deaths. Hopefully, Caiaphas does not die. Um, because the person that died in the last book, I kind of wanted that person to die. But then when they actually did die, I felt kind of bad. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, like I said, I got the arc off of NetGalley. And if you guys don't know what NetGalley is, NetGalley is basically um, a website that anybody can basically go on i'll leave it down below the net galley website but you can go on and request arcs and an arc is basically an advanced reader copy um an e-arc is basically an electronic advanced reader's copy so you can request any type of e-arc from different books that are going to be released now some publishers do have specific um requirements as far as like social media and all that but um a lot of the times it is what it is hold on guys i think my food is calling me okay sorry about that you guys i had got two salads um chicken caesar salads for me and my son and then i got some of those marble brownies from um dominoes but as i was saying that guy is basically a website where you can go on and request um e-arcs of books that are either already out or books that are getting ready to come out and they have a lot like a wide range they have middle grade children's comic books cookbooks poetry books lots of christian books um regular fantasy romance books and things like that so again if you're interested i'll leave a link down below i've been using that galley for a long time um but yeah so i have my e-arc on my phone can you see that cry thread <laughs> It's about to go down, guys. So, I am going to get to reading. Pray for me, okay? Let's go.
I only made it to 8%. Um, I'm not sure what chapter it is because they don't have like the chapter numbers. And what I mean is... Let me see if I can find a chapter for you guys quickly. So, inside of the little ravens, there are chapter numbers. But on the e arcs, there are no chapter numbers. They just have the little ravens. But um, I'm at 8%, as you guys can see. I'm not sure how many chapters that was. But a whole lot was just dished out um, concerning the Ravenwood house. Which, it's stuff that we kind of find out. But... It goes deeper into what really happened with the House of Ravenwood and how they were um, massacred, which I didn't expect. That's why I was making all those facial expressions. I didn't expect, um, like, at all. Um, but you have, what is this guy's name? Lord Leo. I don't even know where he's from. Lord Leo. Okay, so he's from the House of Light. So the House Lucerus. I don't know. House Light. House of Light, whatever. Um... And then you have the House of Wisdom, which is Grand Lord Renlar, um, who was basically a, as they call it back then, a bastard child. Um, his father was the Grand Lord. His mother was a commoner. So he comes into the scene with Grand Lord Leo, and um, they talk in, and Renlar is the one revealing all this stuff about what happened truthfully to the House of Ravenwood. And him and Selene are like, they're learning to forgive each other which I'm loving that aspect. I'm loving the friendship that they're building and I'm, I'm, I hope that stays solid. But Lord Leo is pissing me off with his smart remarks because he keeps downplaying the House of Ravenwood's gift. Everyone has a gift and their gift, like I said, is dream walking or as people call it, dream killing. They can go into your dreams. And um, I like the way Celine put it, how she can use your dreams to make you happy or to literally kill you and stop your heart. <laughs> um, I'm not going to read exactly what she said, but it was on point what she said. It was like on point. Um, probably one of my favorite quotes now in the book. But it's crazy how like they're on the brink of war and the houses all have an issue with Celine because Celine had divulged the truth about how she was supposed to kill um, Damien and you'll know all this if you read the first and second book so read the first and second book but um yeah <laughs> so they divulge she divulges this and they start to hate on her but then the next day they come back Renlar exposes the truth behind her family's um massacre and then you still have Grand Lord Leo over here being a douchebag talking about some oh wow well, what did the empire want with their powers and their powers are not that strong and then when she's explaining what's going on He's like, well, are you threatening us? And I'm just like, oh, he's irritating me. Um, I hope he gets it together. And if not, I hope Damien slaps him in the face. But what I like is that Renlar was like, yo, listen, I already spoke to Celine. I already told her I got her back. So if you come for her, I got you. And I'm just like, oh, I'm loving it. Um, Lady Bryn, Bryn, Bryn. Um, let me look up her name because I don't, I don't really know her name. Bry Byron, she's in the House of Courage. Um, she's pretty nice, but so far I'm really loving it. Um, Morgan is not holding any bars. Um, she she that that was a he like my mind is still reeling over the truth about what happened with um, Celine's family. So whatever, I finished my salad. Done. Um, I'm about to crack open these brownies. Hold on, let me take my seat out. I'm about to eat a brownie and get back to reading. Um, brownies are so good. The cookie brownies. So good. But, I don't know. Um, you can't see my screen. I'm going to do some more reading. Um, I'm going to try to get to 15% and then take a break. Um, but I really want to finish this in one day. We'll see if I can finish this in one day because, like, I'm just, I'm loving it so far. I really wish I knew what chapter I was on. But, um, I love Damien. He is such an amazing husband. And what gets me is that they, they notice the subtle changes in each other. And I, I love it so much. So, I'm going to cut off this light and sit here and just read until I feel like not reading anymore. And I'll come back with my thoughts because my camera is almost full. So, yeah. Okay, guys. So, I made it to 13%. Not 15, but 13. But I really wanted to talk about this chapter. 
So again, I don't know what chapter it is because clearly um, there are no chapter headers in this e-arc. There we go. There's no chapter headers. But um, they've signed the treaty. All of them are working together. So you have Lord Leo and Lady Celine working together to go and basically take back her home, which is the House of Ravenwood. Um, Caiaphas has contacted them and him and the coalition are basically calling for help. So you have Leo, and Leo is such a prideful douchebag. Um, he reminds me of the Levites, because you know the Levites were like the chosen, the chosen people, the chosen tribe of God um, to do the work in the temple and things like that. He really is giving me like Levite vibes. Like he's giving me, um, if you guys know how I feel about Salome from um, Pearl in the Sand or from Daughter of Rome, because I just did that video, um, uh, Aquila. How he's very prideful and thinks he's above everyone because he his house is the house that is like the house of light so they're like the major ones that worship the light and the light is god so he's giving me those kind of cocky vibes prideful and he's pissing me off so he's like um he uses his little magical powers or whatever to call the light and he's like you don't scare me lady Celine. my family serves the light she said, and you don't think I do? His dumb remark is, a family who's done the things yours has cannot serve the light. So then she went off on him about how he don't really know her. First of all, anyone can serve the light, but I'm going to come back to that. So then it goes, um, Celine says, no, he says, well, I'm going to I'm gonna be watching you. I'm going to help you because I trust Damien, so I'm going to be watching you. She goes, then watch me and see the kind of person I have become. <gasps> yes, but... The whole thing with Leo talking about how, like, her family and her, how she couldn't serve um, the light. I marked up the portion prior to, like, her talking to herself and then her prayer to the light. Um, so she goes, Lord Leo is wrong, so wrong. Anyone can serve the light. I serve the light no matter the darkness, no matter the hurt, no matter the betrayals. I can still choose the light. And he gives me the strength to stand. Which is, I think, essential for most people to understand. It doesn't matter how bad you've been. It doesn't matter how much evil you do. I mean, even when it comes to people murdering people, I have two friends from my, three actually, from my high school that have recently in the past few months passed away this year um two of them were murdered one thankfully she survived but two of them were murdered and i being in the human flesh want the people that murdered my friends my associates to die i'm not even gonna lie um and i'm being as truthful as i can be but at the same time i also pray and hope that those people find jesus you know but it doesn't matter what you've done if you murdered someone if you if, if you um had an abortion if you took drugs if you stole something if you cur it, it it doesn't matter what you do all sin is sin at the end of the day there's no like scale of sin in jesus's eyes and god's eyes sin is sin across the board it's equal whether you murder or you steal to us it's like murdering his hair and stealing his hair but it's the same in the eyes of god and jesus however and i'm sorry the heat is getting ready to come on so you might not be able to hear me so i'm going to try to speak as fast as i can but um, the fact that she says, like, no matter what the darkness is, no matter the hurt, no matter the betrayals, I can still choose to serve the light. You can still choose to serve God no matter what you do. Obviously, you repent and there are consequences, but you can still serve. So then she decides to pray. She says, I can do this through your power. I will forgive those who hurt me and I will ask forgiveness of those I have hurt. No matter what lies before me, let me be your light. <sighs> Oh, my heart. And it kind of reminds me, I can't remember the scripture. Um, if I could find it, I'll put it on the screen where it talks about how we are to be light for other people. Um, of course, we are not the light. The light is Jesus who then shines light on the true light, which is God. But we can be a lighthouse to bring others to the light. And I just, I love Celine. I'm just, oh, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm, I'm gushing. I'm loving it. But then, oh. Okay, guys, so I'm back. Um, I wanted to just restate what I was stating earlier because, you know, the heat started up. But um, there was a quote that Celine had said. She said, as a dream walk, I'm sorry, as a dream killer, she had trained to hide her heart. But to be a dream walker, she would need to let her heart be open. And um, sometimes you just have to allow your heart to be open in order to do good. Um... You can't always do good while keeping your heart sealed. 
Um, so then the next chapter, we get some insight on Lady Ragna. Ugh, I can't stand her. But I feel bad. Um, she's always stifling her emotions. Even here in this chapter, in the beginning, she says, um, soon there would be a raising, just like 400 years ago. A sliver of guilt entered her heart, but only for a moment before she crushed it. Being a Lady of Ravenwood meant having no emotions, no attachments, no feelings. Feelings only got in the way of what needed to be done. And it just irritates me that she's like that. Like, I don't like it. And, like, she doesn't even know what happened to her daughter Amara, which got to me. But even then, she's just like, oh, well, you know, hopefully she did what she was supposed to do. And I'm just like, sure, you don't even know what happened to your daughter. All you caring about is what took place. Then she's thinking about Ophelia. And in thinking about Ophelia, she is only thinking about how... When her daughter grows up, she'll have a foothold in the House of Fire, which I believe is the House of Fire. Um, trying to see. Yes, yeah, the House of Fire and Earth. And I'm just like, I'm over her stupidity. Is She's pissing me off and she's not a great mother. Um, granted, how she was raised was very not good. Very not good is not proper English. But the way she was raised impacts how she is. But whatever then you get this whole whew, you get this whole traveling scene with um damien lady brian and um lord renlar on the waverins um it's where where waverins i think they're like dragon type creatures with wings they're not dragons but they look like dragons in my head so they're dragons but um yeah so I'm on 17, I'm at 17% right now. And I'm just going to try to continue reading up to 50% and then come back then because I don't want this to be like a super long vlog. I really want to try to finish this in one day because I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, I, I can't wait to get a physical copy. And then when my physical copy does come, I'm going to reread the entire series over. Um, because I'm pretty sure there are things in Mark of the Raven that... I could annotate a lot more um, because again I don't have that many tabs in this book as you can see not as many um, and I feel like there are certain things that now that I've read the second book and I'm reading the third book I can definitely go back to the first book and see like some parts of foreshadowing so I definitely want to read this obviously you know it got better because in this book I tabbed up like OT <laughs> OD OD only because the romance was like real sexy and it's like the romance got popping um and when i say sexy i mean like they kiss and they actually express their feelings and things like that okay that's what i mean um and even in this book the romance is so sweet even though they're at war um the romance between damien and celine is amazing so i'm gonna stop rambling i'm gonna come back to you guys later um what time is it Whew. it's 2 16 right now so I'll come back to you guys later because I'm still reading another book, which is oh, this. This is a YA fantasy called Blood Rose Rebellion by Rosalind Eves. I'm reading this book right now. Um, I'm about 18 chapters in. So I'm on page, what page am I on? 219, chapter 18. Um, this is a okay read. I really just love um, the foiling on this really cute i don't think i'm gonna keep this book though i might unhaul this book um just because i don't think it's gonna get a high rating for me. i only want to keep books on my shelves outside of my christian books of course that are four stars and up anything that's a three stars we're just not gonna keep and this will most likely be one of the books i unhaul but i think this book is gorgeous nonetheless so yeah we have that and then if i can finish that book i want to dive into Blood Rose Redemption by Judy Charm. This is the, f the fourth and final book that I received from Ambassador International that I need to read and review. And um, I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about this. Um, I'm not going to lie. I'm not sure. But I requested it because it sounded interesting. It had a little bit of fantastical aspects to it. It's futuristic. And um, it's suspense filled. So we'll see how I feel about this. And, um, yeah, so I'm going to get back to reading and I'll chat with you guys later. I yeah, like my new little setup right here. I'll put the books there, the first and second book. But, um, so I am 59% of the way through. 
I can get this to focus for you guys. 59%. And something just happened that I wasn't expecting. Like, I knew there were going to be deaths, but this person that actually just died, I was not expecting to die. And got me a little emotional. Wasn't expecting it. It was definitely just like, what? Um, and he's one of my favorite characters. I love him so much. And the fact that he's like, he's dying and... Seeing the pain that it's causing Damien is like crushing me, so I don't know. I'm I'm heartbroken right now, so I'm gonna continue reading because I'm gonna die. So Okay guys, so I don't know what chapter this is, but I'm at 91%. It is currently 719. I'm gonna record myself reading the last few chapters um they're in what they're at war right now and things have gone down like really gone down um it's insane what's taking place but all the houses have finally come together and celine is stuck in the dreamscape battling her mother and the dark lady <sighs> i'm not ready I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm not ready, but you guys are going to watch me read the last few pages. I feel like there's only like two or three chapters left, but I don't know, like I said, because it doesn't have like chapter numbers. But let's, let's dive in. Um, it's 11.14, December 16 right now. Um, I just did some catch-up reading on She Prays, which is pretty good. Um, I've been annotating, but I haven't been, like, highlighting. So I have to go back and highlight. But um, on day 16, 17 tomorrow. But I had to take some time to get my thoughts together, and I still don't even know. So I wrote my review already, and sorry if you guys hear my son. He is right there sleeping, but um, I had to get my thoughts together because I didn't. I, I just, ugh, it was so beautiful. Um, I, I, I just, I love. I'm grabbing the books, but I love the Ravenwood saga. Um, the trilogy is fantastic. It is great Christian fantasy. I think if you're new to Christian fantasy, which I was definitely new to Christian fantasy. I think starting off with um, the Morgan L. Bussey's uh, Mark of the Raven book is perfect because it's not hard for you to distinguish who God is and who the enemy is. And it's easy for you to really get a grasp on the scriptures that she's used. I think it was crafted really well. The romance was perfection. Um, it was real and authentic. The family dynamics was amazing. The character dynamics, the character growth, and you having this main character that used to dabble and um, I'm going to say dark arts or dark magic and her battling between listening to her mother or 
listening to the light and basically believing in God and using her her gifts and stuff for good and it's just <sighs> I loved it um I love the end I really wish it was a fourth book I I really wish it was a fourth book but I'm really really just excited and happy and blessed that I got an opportunity to read this before the book came out epic um I can't wait to have the book in my hand and have them just look gorgeous on my shelves together so just know individual book reviews are coming um i'm i'm just mind blown i'm happy with the end for grand lady celine and grand lord damien i love that lord leo finally got his act together i still have a little hope for lady ragna especially with that end um i was so happy to see renata i think that's how you say her name and she's from the first book so I was so excited to see her so so much i was so excited to see her um and i just i loved the story um and the cute little scene with ophelia and um what's his name oh my god raul i'm gonna say raul is his name that's probably not his name but the cute scene between ophelia filiana sorry her name is ophelia i call her ophelia for short but um that scene was so cute and just everything just gush worthy i loved it but I'm gonna wrap this video up here because my son is snoring like crazy i don't know if y'all hear him um and it might not sound bad to y'all but to me and it being in my ear it sound crazy i don't like snoring <laughs> but yeah i definitely recommend it to you guys all the links will be down below for you guys to get your hands on a copy of the book as it's already out by the time you see this like i said it comes out on february February 4th, I was about to say February 20th, but February 4th, 2020, which is Tuesday, so get a copy. I will hopefully have my copy by now or within the week that this video is going up, but that is it for this video, and if you're not subscribed, subscribe. If you are subscribed, click the bell to stay notified, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!